Hey guys, it's Justine Hernandez with Passion Style Purpose, and I got my girl her Patrice. Hey. So we're gonna talk about uh, having conversations and conscious conversations about things that are going on in their world and their life that we're all experiencing, but sometimes don't really talk about um, unless we're in our inner circles and stuff. So we wanted to share and talk about the journey of soul awakening and what that means and what that represents for us. So. Um, yeah, so tell me a little bit about yourself. And so I just met this beautiful goddess. Like, I've known her for probably like a couple years, but t consciously and yes. intentionally yes. Um, the past year, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so Patrice, tell me about you and all that stuff. Well, yes, I am Patrice and I am from here. I'm from Virginia Beach, born and raised. And so I am. Uh, I'm an artist. I love to paint. I'm very passionate, multi-passionate, creative, and I also am a seeker. So that's what we're talking about today. Yes. So I've been really interested in this conversation about um, soul awakening because um, I feel like a lot of people are going through this transition in their life where they're having a spiritual experience and it's shaking their foundation to their core. Um, when it comes to their belief, whether it be in religion or their own spiritual journey. And so I think it's important for us to all share our own journeys of what that looks like for us because everything looks different. Like our spiritual journeys and our connections are different for every individual and how they do things because we experience our life and our world differently. And um, I thought this was a great topic to share. I don't know, like just. I went through this. I've actually gone through um, a couple of huge awakenings in my life. Mm -hmm. And so they were profound, but scary. And I felt crazy sometimes, but I want you to feel like that journey that you're going on, that you're not crazy. That's just part of the journey of letting go of things in your life that have been um, like blinders and things that were given to you generationally or told to you as a child that you took on as truth for yourself. And right now it's like when you go through that soul awakening, you're questioning all those aspects. You're questioning yourself to your core, what you believe, what are your values, what are those things that are going on. And you start to realize that your life doesn't reflect um, your beliefs and your core values of everything that you are your essence and stuff and so you go through this period of like shit I've just surrounded my fucking life with stuff that is just like I don't know what I was thinking and now I'm like the blinders are there or not there anymore so I have to be aware and be like okay so what do I do now like what's the next step so um, I wanted to I wanted Patrice to share her journey and you know just so if you have questions and um, if, yeah, if you have questions and you've gone on this journey, like please share and watch and feel free to comment. I'll be um, checking the messages and stuff like that so um, we can be of love and light and just all that fun stuff. So yeah, so go ahead girl, share your journey. Yeah, so spiritual awakening, it's, it's like hitting the reset button and it can be different from everyone it's when you're tired of just the same old same old you're tired of going through the motions and you want to break that cycle of routine it's that feeling of hitting rock bottom and the ideals that you were taught and maybe the uh, everything that worked for you before the comfort that worked for you before and the words that worked for you before just not pulling out Pulling you out of that dark hole anymore it's just not cutting it the yeah. stuff that you've learned before and it's just not adding up so you start questioning everything and you realize that you can actually uh, think for yourself and mm -hmm. you start questioning and relearning and breaking down everything that you were taught everything that you thought were true and everything that is out there that just is not working for you it's not adding up mm -hmm. so for me it was a lot like that and I grew up uh, super religious um, with fear-based concepts from religion uh, the rules from that as well and I was 
scared, very scared to question anything. And that came from just having that feeling that I wasn't allowed to question anything. The rules were the rules and this is what it was. And if you question it, I felt like I was going to hell. Yeah, <laughs> you going to hell! Yes, <laughs> that's what it felt like. And I've never had that freedom, that freedom and the openness to realize that I can question things, I can think for myself, and I can find my own truth. Mm -hmm. So I went through that process, and you realize you can look outside of a book. You can look outside of just this global box that we're in. You can look outside of our world uh, and find answers. You can go within and find answers and just sit in that stillness and listen. You have the power to find your own truth. And I always felt like I had to go to an um, authority figure or someone who was a pastor or a minister to get answers. Mm -hmm. And whatever answers they gave me, that was it. Those were the answers. And when you realize that that's not the case, you can actually rely on yourself and you have that power and you realize who you are and you take your power back and your eyes are just open to a world of possibilities and you, I was just and surprised. Like, wow, you're like mind blown, right? Yes, <laughs> the shift was so surprising and eye opening and it's hard and you feel like you're going crazy and you feel like nobody understands you and it's a very lonely time but you're so excited at the same time and you just want to soak in all this knowledge and you want to learn more and it just feels so good, it's so worth it to do the work. You really have to do the work to save yourself. And soul search, and that's what it's all about. Mm, I, I love that because I feel like when you have that awakening process, like one of the things that, it first it's just, it feels earth shattering. And I, I know we're kind of like commenting it in a certain way, but it's, it's earth shattering at first because it's something new like anything new that you try it seems complicated until you go through the motions and you learn it and you're like oh this is this is okay this is a new routine this is a new flow and you get with the you get with the program you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things that I noticed for myself was as I was going through my awakenings and I was like searching for knowledge and just like taking I'm, I'm a seeker of truth like I'm just a big seeker of truth and I love finding and, and I started seeing correlations and um, connecting the dots with different beliefs different mindsets different cultures and how they believed and how they did their structure and I started realizing that there's a common story that there's a common um, a common line between everything that has been passed down from culture to culture, generation to generation. And so it made me think, well, where did all this stuff originate from? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I kept digging deeper and deeper and deeper and trying to look into like, um, like ancient history. And like, I was a big fan of biblical history growing up. I love ancient history and ancient Egypt and was really connected with that. And then realizing as even with science and as they're progressing and finding archaeological evidence that we're actually been here a lot longer than anticipated and science is starting to realize that and there's just so much like knowledge out there and it feels overwhelming and it's like if I I do feel like sometimes if I had too much knowledge that um, I wouldn't be able to see the truth you know kind of thing but that's that was something I had to work through that, you know, I don't know if you've experienced that for yourself where you just like, this is so much, like, how do I know what is truth and what isn't? You know? Yeah, and that's just about, it's like a muscle you have to flex and it's a lot to do with your intuition and just really trusting yourself. So I'll watch, I'll get really excited and I'll watch a lot of different videos or topics on YouTube where we were talking about Gaia and different programs and a lot of the stuff is just like, you know I'm not sure about that or it's like over my head or it's too <laughs> overwhelming but like you I'm very much um, interested in the different cultures and a, a saying that I like is one truth many different songs mm. so I find there's a lot of truth in all different religions even in all the different holy books you can find 
truth, uh, but you just have to trust yourself and be able to go through the process and be able to think for yourself. And then, you know, if you want to research more in those areas, read up on those, research those, and trust yourself and just go within and see what you feel about that, what your soul feels about that, and it will guide you to whatever is true for you and your mm -hmm. truth. So. so my question, that came up for me uh, that I want to ask you is what triggered your awakening because that's always like there has there's like a trigger point yeah. like it's a build up and then you're not aware and then all of a sudden bam so what was your trigger my <laughs> trigger was a uh, postpartum depression after I gave birth to my son mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've, I've always been a happyish happyish person now that I'm on the other side I really know what happiness feels like and it's mm. nothing like I felt ever before right so <laughs> I was hit very hard by this postpartum depression and I, I never felt anything like that and I was just lost I didn't know what to do I always had a plan I was always organized I always met my goals I'm mm. you know after I go to after I finish high school I'm gonna go to college I'm gonna get my degree in this and then I'm gonna get a job here and then I'm gonna get married and I'm gonna get the house I'm gonna have yeah. the baby and all of these things <laughs> the <don't checklist. laughs> look lost like if somebody looked at me from the outside I definitely wouldn't have looked lost and I didn't feel lost but I went through this postpartum depression and I realized how lost I really mm. was um, everything that worked for me before when I was sad and reading scripture or anything that comforted me before or going to a pastor or a minister it just wasn't cutting it and it wasn't enough to pull me out and so I had to do it for myself and I had to start thinking for myself and I had to reprogram and uproot mm -hmm. everything and realize that I had to relearn and uh, relearn who I was and remember who I was and why I am here and also, when my son was born, I had a lot of pressure from family and friends. And when are you going to find a church home? You mm. need to find a church home before he gets a certain age. You can start that foundation. And me growing up, I felt like the foundation was really good for me to at least keep me on the right track. But then I realized what was set as control to keep you on the right track was also set in control to keep you asleep. Mm. So I really taking up a not pew. Want to. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I really did not want to um, start a foundation if it wasn't something that I felt 100% about. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to just jump into something that I knew the questions were starting to arise. I knew I had to dive into myself and really figure out what I wanted to do and what direction I wanted to take in that. It was really important for me to teach him what was on my heart and what was in alignment with mm -hmm. my heart. Yes. And so that's how it started. That's all the questions came about. Ooh, man, I bet that's so much fun because, you know, when you're dealing, after having a child, like, you are just, I feel like you're so open and vulnerable, and that's usually the best time for you to, like, be like, okay, finally, you're listening to me because yes. you have no no space but to just be present. Oh, yeah, you're totally right on yeah. that. <laughs> you can't do choice. anything <laughs> else but be fully present because your yes. child needs you. <laughs> And like, yeah, that's that's very interesting because both of my awakenings are were associated with my children. Really? Yeah, it really was. Um, I don't know for maybe for you ladies out there and your um, your own spiritual awakening, what triggered yours? You know, maybe it maybe you have a very similar story to us where it happened when we were having our children. You know, um, I think for me mine was building up I could see it built up before I had the other awakening because I was already conscious um, when I was going through this uh, through my second pregnancy um, I wasn't able to do use any of my tools like so how you were saying like when you were pregnant um, or I'm sorry when you were going through awakening the mm -hmm. things that comfort you didn't comfort you anymore mm -hmm. So I felt like for me, I was doing a lot of um, soul searching and undoing religious programming that I was um, that I was dealing with because I noticed that some of it was stopping me from my potential, mm -hmm. and so I had to address what those limiting beliefs were that were programmed in me from my upbringing um, in a religious environment and stuff. So like the guilt that goes with it and like 
all these other little little small nuances that you don't realize are an issue until you're uncovering all this yes. stuff you know I mean it definitely brings it all to the surface I think because it's not you're just not responsible for yourself it's, you're bringing a whole nother life into the world and you just want to make sure you're doing it right yeah so I did not sure if I ever would have questioned mm. if it wasn't for him if it wasn't for my son if I didn't go through that experience that I did and it just made me just soul search and look at myself very deeply and figure out uh, what life meant to me and I also wanted not only to uh, teach him uh, what I thought was the appropriate for this generation and going yeah. forward and the global awakening that we're going through but also for myself I want to um, accept set an example for him yeah. as a parent to show him you know all the walls that we can break down and the powers that we have and you know magic is real and we can do amazing things yes yeah so yeah I don't <laughs> want to stay stagnant at all like I always want to just crush any goals and just show him you know exactly what is possible in our that's abilities. beautiful mm -hmm. And I think that's so important because, you know, before we went on live, I was talking about how, like, when you grow up in church, like, grow up in religion and things like that, you have this mindset that, um, like, for me growing up, I would kind of see, like, this grandfathering in effect, like, I got grandfathered in to be saved, you know? Yeah. And so it makes you lazy in your seeking to have a relationship with the divine because you don't question your relationship. You haven't built that intentional relationship, personal relationship with the divine, with God, because you weren't taught. You were just taught to show up, go to church every Sunday, show up in a pew, take oh, in, yeah. yeah, take in what the preacher, or the person is telling you, you repent for whatever it is that you did wrong, and then everything is gonna be fine. Go to a buffet, and then next, oh my God, yes. next thing, you are starting Monday right the with that. <laughs> so it's like you got into this circular this circular routine but you were never taught what what a real relationship it, looks really, like yeah truly feel in it a and deeper realize side yeah that you really have to do the work because I was also thinking about that and this is I think about this a lot when people go to get saved do they think that once they're saved it's just magically gonna happen for them or you know, it's not going to be the hard work where they really have to dive in. And I wonder if people really realize the depths that you really have to pull back the layers and do the work yourself. Yeah. You have to be self-disciplined to want to do the work. Mm -hmm. So when you get saved, you're making that decision that I'm going to do the work. But growing up in the religion, um, I don't I don't think it was very clear. They just thought that you could get dumped with water or with yeah. water and it would just, something magical would happen. Yeah. And Awakening is a magical experience, but it is hard work at the same time, and you have to save yourself. It's yeah. really saving yourself because it's up to you to do the work. Exactly, because no one's gonna, no one's gonna help you get through your stuff. Like you have to face it. You know, you have to face your limiting beliefs. You have to face the things that are holding you back in your life and that's keeping you stagnant. Like. You like when you become awakened, when you go through this awakening pro process, your the veil of ignorance comes off. Mm -hmm. So, if you continue on that path, you'll notice that you can either continue to be stick stay in your ignorance when you're you're awakened, and then that will not be so well for you in the long run, or you can take action and deal with the stuff that's popping up so that you can step into more of happiness and abundance and like. You know, like happiness doesn't come from, you know, having the perfect life. It comes from self fulfillment, from having so much deep understanding of who you are, um, like who you are, what makes you you, why do you love yourself, and why do you do the things that you do. When you understand that to the core, that's when you have true happiness. And you're never going to get there, it's part of the process. Like, the con like life is not consistent but what is consistent is inconsistency <laughs> so that that to me cracks me up because like we're in a culture where we're being taught consistency is key like you know 
get um this is how you have a successful life but they don't take into account yes that's that checklist but the bridge the path to get there looks like like this wow. And like this, and then you stop here, and then like you know, oh, and they're like, oh, you got to redirect. <laughs> show up for yourself. <laughs> exactly. Through. I remember when I did get saved when I was a teenager, um, when it was my choice. You know, I was baptized when I was a baby, but then when you get older, and you, it's your choice to choose if you're gonna get saved. Mm -hmm. And I chose that. And I remember going to sleep at night and just imagining waking up a totally different person, or feeling something amazing when I went to mm -hmm. sleep. And it just didn't do what I thought it was going to do. Yeah. And so to realize that you really have to do that work yourself. And um, the happiness really came for me through realizing my power. I didn't realize I had so much power. And um, yes, how you can pull yourself out of, you know, darkness. And you can learn so much. And you can learn so much about yourself and to break down your ego and push aside your pride and realize that i don't know anything yeah <laughs> i thought i did but right. I, I really didn't know anything and so the whole process of realizing so much and like you said the veil is lifted and your eyes are opened and the number one thing is realizing that we live in an illogical world like it doesn't make sense you're taught that you're, if you're a good person, then you know bad things shouldn't happen to you. If you're a good person, only bad things happen to people who do bad things. But yeah. the truth is, you can be the best person or the most um, giving person, have the best heart, and things all certainly still happen. Bad things still happen. That's the world that we live in. And so to realize that if you're strong in yourself and strong in the faith and believing in yourself and doing that work for yourself and showing up realizing your power and staying consistent for yourself yes in those times that it's, it's gonna happen you know um, that's gonna keep you that solid foundation yeah and keep you strong in those times and so you can come back in those ways and face fear stronger and you can face those things that don't make sense and that hurt us and understand why certain things happen and that there's not you know the saying everything happens for a reason yeah. but not in a reasoning that we may be ca capable of with our human brain. it's not a surface level yes. everything happens for a reason it's like everything happens for a reason it's like a deeper you have that a we deeper may not understanding be able to comprehend yeah. at our level but understanding that on a spiritual journey hey, and our spiritual growth yeah that things are happening for our soul journey exactly so I just, I love this. This is like, I'm like turning my wheels because <laughs> it makes me so happy that like when you, when you think of when you're questioning stuff, when you first start and get into this space, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm questioning everything. Hold the phone. Like I'm about to lose my marbles. Like, is this like a dark path? Am I going to go down this bad alleyway because I'm I'm thinking differently, I'm shifting, and you know, like how we said, like you feel a little crazy. And I would encourage you, like, I, for me, it was really important for me in these moments to surround myself with people that I, like, that I had an outlet to go to. Because that supported me to, well, the first awakening I had, I was not supported. I was doing it all by myself. <laughs> and I did feel a little wacky and a little crazy. <laughs> and I had a lot of shit going on in my life. I was going through two custody battles, going through a divorce. Like, my world was rocked foundationally. So, <clears throat> that was, I did not have the right, amount, right people around me in that time period. But when I made that shift for the, the next awakening that I had for my second child, um, I really had, I had my husband, which was an amazing support system. And I like, bless him. Cause I was such a bitch when I was pregnant. I really was. I was a <laughs> complete bitch. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> my Puerto Rican, the, the I'm a cut you came out. <laughs> <Girl>. <laughs> so yeah, my Puerto Rican was coming out intensely and I just felt over, um, to be honest, like I really felt overpowered by my child. Like this little being took over me. None of my tools were working. I didn't feel connected. I just, 
but I think it was a precursor because I had gone to Italy and to Ireland um, actually a few months prior and so I got to go see the Vatican and got to be in like you know Catholic Central kind of thing mm. and so when I went to the Vatican I was so it was it's so beautiful architecturally and everything like that but I was I could feel because I'm a feeler and because I do feng shui and I do what I do I could feel the energy in the space and all I could feel was ego it had nothing to do with God it had nothing to do with that energy whatsoever and I felt like it was a misrepresentation of the divine and it was it disgusted me <laughs> downright it straight up disgusting. disgusted me so bad uh -huh. and I was like oh this sucks because like I was looking at all the old temp went to I went to Rome and went to go I wanted to go see all the temples and all the stuff and it was overran by like the religious institutions in that time then they destroyed all this ancient like all this beautiful architecture and put a bunch of crosses and churches all over it and I'm not dogging religion it's just more of like the intention behind it was saddening to me um a piece of like a piece of my 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 spirit was like really sad for how things went down um in that period of Rome and then I went to Ireland and that had a profound deep healing um, there where I studied with the Druids and the high priestesses in Ireland and it was really wonderful and like my inner child got to play and I got to experience the magic of, um, of Ireland and the spiritual experience it was just so profound and very beautiful so when I got pregnant and then I had like this awakening it really like it hit hard like I was almost like cynical of how like I was just like so negative about like someone would say oh like god is good and i'm like Psh, whatever yeah. <laughs> you know like all the little quotes and saying like i was just so angry about it's it because it's irritated yeah it's, it's coming to the surface exactly yeah. so it's just you know i don't know for you if you experienced that when you were going through your awakening where it's like you have this profound deep disgust and you can't believe that this is what's going on in this world and how like I was almost like he's my like my god of the universe is like being yes. treated like 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 being whored out like to control people was kind of like my yes I my can thing so totally <laughs> relate to that I do have feelings that I try to work through that um, things just bother me you yeah. know about religion and the control about that and the way that happened and me going through my awakening and realizing all that I got very angry yeah and that's Very part upset. of it yeah. and um just not knowing how to handle it when seeing it outside or you know with family or friends and i used to be just like them yeah. and to have your paradigm shift and your perspective shift so immensely so but this is a process where it clicks when you first have that first awakening and you're having all the questions and you're doing the internal work something yeah. just clicks but it's not one big click it's an evolution and you have thousands of clicks oh, through I know. a lifetime so it just, you just keep going to a different level different level different level and i think it's just something i'm still struggling to work with yeah um just being irritated all the <laughs> <laughs> no i yes. feel you yeah. well i think it's because when you step into this place of love and you see things not mirroring what it should yeah it's kind of like what the f you know what i mean like what the f is going on but those are those moments where like working through that is powerful because then you get to turn that frustration into love and empathy because you realize you were once there yep you have to keep looking back and that's part of that ego breakdown too so a lot of people like to stress when you're going through this uh spiritual awakening you have to remember we're all one uh, you're not you don't want to represent yourself as or feeling like you're better than anyone else yeah and I'm not saying that I felt that way I just felt frustrated with um, people not being able to see and comprehend now that I see it the way that I see it and um, wishing you could just share with everyone and then be able to comprehend it but if someone told me this maybe five six years ago maybe I wasn't ready or I wouldn't have been able to comprehend it 
actually I wasn't in that place and I didn't encounter that trigger. Yeah. Um, so everybody's not ready at the same time. Everybody's on their same journey and you have to be respectful of that and understand yeah. where they are and keep reminding yourself that you were once there. Yeah. You know? And that can be hard from time to time, mm -hmm. especially when you feel like you're getting attacked because <clears throat> like for me, I, I believe that not everyone not everyone is going to believe the same thing like if you go into politics or religion institutions things like that there are a room full of people but they all they may believe generally the same thing mm -hmm. but how it applies and how it looks for them is different mm -hmm. and so even like someone can be oh i'm christian but how they interpret christianity is different from person to person to person yes. so it's very That's interesting true. um because I had to realize that myself, that everyone's interpretation is different and that how you apply it is different and that everyone's on their own journey and they're experiencing, they're, they're getting like these little nuggets, you know, and all you can do is be you and be your light and be confident in who you are even when you don't feel confident in yourself mm -hmm. and the things that you believe in and stuff like that. Like even right now, like whatever it is that you believe, it's going to change. It's going to shift. Um, it doesn't mean that you weren't in truth. It just means you were in truth in that, in that season of your life. Mm -hmm. And that, um, I feel like awakening and spiritual growth is a stepping stone. It's, it's a journey. You're never arriving. It's just, it's just kind of like, you're just building a relationship with someone. You know what I mean? Like it starts somewhere. Like, you know, me building a relationship with you, it started somewhere. You know, and we evolved, and, and we're getting to know each other a little bit more, and that will change and grow. And then learn new things about each other. Exactly. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah, it's not a one and done. Definitely not. This is a huge feat, but it's a very important and worthy feat um, that I'm so glad that I'm finally realized and <laughs> going through. <laughs> Well, it feels good when there's other people involved because yes. what other people are doing, you're like, oh, you went through it too. I felt so alone at first, so alone for the longest time. But a part of this journey is learning how to be in alignment and not being so down on myself and desperate for support and desperate for somebody to understand me and just keep doing the work. And eventually, it, it was crazy. People just came out of the woodworks. Like, alignment people the universe were just was just bringing people to me and just showing me that i am doing the right thing i'm on the right path because you know we always doubt ourselves oh, and yeah. we need confirmation after confirmation and are you sure mm -hmm. <laughs> so just to know that you are living in your truth and you are staying in alignment and the universe will prove it to you and people will show up in your lives that will just blow you away Seriously, I'm blown away every day. I had the best week of my life last uh, week. I know. This, this past <laughs> week was really awesome. I was just meeting amazing people and, like, alignment. And I was like, were, oh, my gosh. Yes. The connections were magical. Yeah. I feel like when I became more open to, real, like, more open that I'm not, like, the only weirdo in this planet, you know, kind of thing, it, like, I, it's just, it's just really awesome. You start seeing your who you're attracting into mm -hmm. your sphere of influence and you're changing relationships and building new friends and then you're like, oh shit. I'm like, me and you have a similar story. Yep. And it's so amazing. And then you build a new relationship and you feel so much grounded and supported and you get reassured that what you're going through, they went through and you can support them or they can support you because you guys are on different levels of your journey. And like that to me is powerful because if I had someone in the beginning that like yeah you you're fine that's normal what you're going through is normal let's see we should worry less about knowing the truth and worry more about being on the right frequency which require requires ooh, sorry i'm trying to read the whole thing requires self-awareness good job you are i <laughs> <laughs> love you hun awesome yes. He's keeping those guys. high vibes yes it's hard sometimes I, when I first started awakening, I kind of got obsessed with keeping my high, my vibes high all the time and forgetting uh, you are human, you know. Yeah. So there's a balance. There's definitely a balance, and I was so hard on myself. And there's a chart. I forgot what's called Hawkins scale oh. or something, and it, it shows you a chart of uh, awakening or expanded consciousness. Okay. 
So it shows you the lower vibrations, which is grief, um, shame, anger, and then it keeps going up, and then you see willingness, neutrality, uh, joy, love. Um, love is a like love is five hundred or something yeah. like that. So and then it had the the vibration frequency number next to it. And as soon as I found that chart, it was a blessing, but kind of a curse at the same time because <laughs> I took it so literally. Yeah. <laughs> Every day I was like, okay, where am I today? And I would just do whatever I could to make sure I kept it high. Yeah. But then I just, self-care and self-love is realizing, you know, you're on this human journey. Yes, and gotta remember you're human. You gotta do <laughs> and take the time to um, pick yourself back up, but not have to, you know, take your time to do it and do it the right way and not try to fake it and try to rush it up and yes. rush through it and just learn yourself and know how to balance that out. Yeah, no, that's true. That's totally true. So you just want to go all gun ho yes, you know? <laughs> you want to be gun ho you want to do it right, you're going to be efficient mm -hmm. in your spiritual awakening, you're well, going to get shit I done. In <laughs> everything in life. So it's not different when it became spiritual awakening. Like, I would watch YouTube 24-7. I was so obsessed, like video after video after video, like whatever I could shove in my head and learn. And then just learning different methods to keep my vibes high and I bought all the crystals and I bought the sage and I just everything at once yeah but that's how I am at anything in life like if I find something new or something that I you give it a hundred and ten percent anything I put my mind to I just go hard go hard or go home <laughs> <laughs> I love it yes no, I feel you. I'm, t I'm totally like type A about stuff like that. I had to actually learn how to be more fluid in my spiritual practice yep. because I can be very rigid in my thinking. And it de definitely the spiritual awakening taught me how to be more in that balance and that it's okay to be in, I like to call it the feminine energy because mm -hmm. the feminine energy is like going with the flow, taking things as it comes, you know, and it's very fluid and transformational. Where I like, my comfort zone is like fire element. It's like mm -hmm. action, getting things done, movement, ah, uh, yes. yes, accomplishment, ah, <laughs> uh, badass, you know what I mean? Like that's how I want to be. Yeah. But in spiritual practice, it's not that's like not that. It. Yeah, that's not how. It's like a push and pull. It's like this mm -hmm. on a constant basis. And you think you have something figured out, but then the next week it doesn't work out the way you want it to, and then you have to recalibrate and see what do you need to adjust in your spiritual yeah, practice yeah. to help bring ground you and help bring that whatever insight and intention that you're cultivating. That's true. So. I, I'm in the season now, which is what I'm calling my perfecting season, mm -hmm. which is a slow season for me. Yeah. And I'm realizing, you know, I felt like I was in a rut. I felt like I couldn't get my vibrations as high as I, I couldn't feel that bliss like I was feeling. And so when you first start awakening, it's hard. Well, for me, it was hard, felt lonely. And then you start getting alignment with your frequency and you're finding some of your people and then you feel yes. this overwhelming feeling of love and bliss and happiness. And you yes. feel like you're gonna feel that forever. Yeah. But then, you know, it comes back down sometimes. Yeah. And you have to just learn how to pick yourself back up and know that it's okay and it's a time to either uproot something else as a time of healing, yeah. the universe is trying to tell you something or show you something else and tell you to slow down, hey listen, you got some growth to do in this yeah. area, so. Hi Francis. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally agree. I mean, it's constant work. It growth. is a constant. It's constant work, constant change, and you just have to be patient with yourself and know that, um, yeah, like just be patient with yourself and know that th this is not, you don't have to have any expectations. The expectation is being in present and going with the flow. Mm -hmm. Because like, I don't know, it's, it's just one of those things you can't like, you can't make it happen. You can't, you can't force it. It just has to flow through you and it has to, um, just going through that journey. And I feel another thing I, that's popping up that I want to share too is, you know, when you go through, when people think of, oh, you're spiritual, you're on the spiritual awakening kind of thing, they think like you're this positive, happy-go-lucky, you don't cuss, you don't drink, you don't smoke, you don't do, you're just a freaking square. 
I'm gonna just say fucking square just for the point <laughs> yes. that you that I cuss <laughs> a lot. <laughs> me too, me too. So I'm just saying like for those that feel like you have to look and be a certain way on this journey, you don't. You know, this is you're human, you have a personality, you have a way of being, and you have to be yourself, you know. And for me, like I cuss a lot actually. I, I tone it down because my two-year-old is, um... Yeah, I just noticed my son catching on, too. Yeah, so... I'm but like, he's five. Oh, that's... Di yeah. It's been a minute. <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, yeah, he's, he's catching on now. Yeah, I my little one's like... <laughs> oh, he's, he was like, no, we'll do... That's okay, Mommy. We'll keep... We'll wait till you're a little older. <laughs> <laughs> that's so yes. funny. So, but yeah. yeah. But I, I was realizing that, too. Um when you find other people that are awakening automatically or on their spiritual awakening journey automatically thought we could be besties but everybody's journey is different so mm -hmm. just because someone else is also on the same awakening journey doesn't mean they're in alignment with you yes exactly. still even though you can talk about these things and have similarities it, it was hard for me to realize that everyone that I came across I got so excited that anyone that I found was going through a spiritual awakening I automatically want to be besties with them and you realize that everybody's journey is different and even though they're going through this awakening journey they still might not be in alignment with your journey yeah that's beautiful yeah i love that you said that yeah mm -hmm. so that was different to realize is i'm thinking oh we're all we're all in this global awakening together this is why we're here we volunteered to be here for this on this planet and we're rising big happy party yeah you know so it was just like <laughs> you know that's that's an awesome idealistic idea that I had in my head and I get like these hopeless romantic ideas in my head about certain things like that just mm. even about women women empowerment women coming together and doing amazing things together and I always have these ideas in my head and just the best badass women coming together and doing accomplishing yeah like boss babes together or you know mm. doing that and it just doesn't work out that way all the time but I still have hope and I just love connecting with women that was set my soul on fire connection human connection and doing positive things and making positive changes together yeah so it's just to realize that this is the biggest global awakening we've had and yeah. it's a big time in the history of the planet and we're here to do that yeah sets me on fire and that's what really set me on fire for some like oh my gosh we're so powerful yes. this is why we were brought here for this huge mission so to make things shift and change and mm -hmm. for people to feel empowered you know make them really feel empowered because I like like how you said you didn't realize how powerful you were and like for me I felt the same way I didn't realize I still don't realize how powerful I am, you know, sometimes I just need that confirmation and things like that because there are certain areas in my life that I don't feel confident in and that's okay because I'm working on those areas, it would be different if I wasn't working on them, but like, so if I don't feel that confidence in anything that you're doing, that's fine, you can build on that and just focus on your energy and what it is that you're wanting to cultivate. So when you're going through this journey, don't judge yourself, you know, so harshly because you're just growing and evolving and nothing is perfect. And perfection, I was listening to a, a, a podcast, I think, or a YouTube video where, you know, perfectionism is a, an illusion that it's actually, um, it's a blanket of fear and, um, it's like a yeah it's a blanket of fear is what it, what I remember it saying something like that so That's I thought that was really interesting yeah so you, it's kind of like anxiety that you're gonna mess up or exactly it's a wrong. fear yeah. yeah so it's like oh I'm afraid that I'm gonna do something wrong because I want to do it perfect so you procrastinate and then that procrastination is fear mm. so and when you realize that's what perfectionism is and there's also this thing of like oh, you know, 
I'm not gonna turn in this project, I'll message someone and be like, oh, you know, I'm gonna do this project for you by next week because I wanna make sure that it's perfect. When in reality, you probably procrastinated on yeah. it. But because it sounds better, that you're more organized and more like whatever <laughs> the case is, you're, you're perfectionist. So if, you know, so you have to be mindful about those type of behaviors that you do and just, sorry, I procrastinated, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you just gotta be authentic and, and, well, authentic with yourself. You need to be honest with yourself. And I think that's like one of the things that you start to uncover part of your awakening is you call yourself on your, on your BS no. and you're realizing, oh, oh this is, out. yeah. Yes. But that's, that's the whole thing about like breaking down that ego and pushing your pride aside. You, you have to be able and not be afraid to call your, yourself out on your own shit. Yeah. Like, that's important. A lot of people are afraid to do that or uh, admit to, to certain things or, you know, ashamed yeah. um, to do that. And that's what holds us back a lot. And once you start your awakening journey, you're not going to be perfect. It's still, you're still going to have to do a whole bunch of work on that and other things in different areas in your life. It's going to be a lifetime yeah. journey. And it's a beautiful one. Though. And it really is. So those of you that are going through your awakening journey, well, I guess what would advice you would give like as a as a thing for people to practice if they're going through this journey like what is something that you would recommend so my biggest you? fear when I was first going through awakening is that people thought I was crazy or people would look at me differently people didn't understand me or um, where I was coming from for me coming off weird yeah. um, just keep pushing through it there are so many of us just like that out here now <laughs> I mean it's a global awakening it's it's growing yes. day by day by day and once you awaken just by you awakening on your own you're helping to awake others around you yeah because it's your light and we don't ever want to dim our lights so you're not crazy number one yes. you may feel like you are that that was the biggest thing over my head. I really did not, not want to open my mouth of what I was experiencing. I did not want to talk about it at first because I just knew everybody thought I was cuckoo. Um, not crazy. Keep pushing through it. It gets better. And you'll have support. You will find support if you stay within alignment and support will find you. You, you will go through a lonely period more than likely, but just keep pushing through it. It's only temporary, yeah. Mm -hmm. It is temporary. So, and then for me, what helped me was community. You know what I mean? Not forcing community, mm -hmm. but embracing the people that came into my life that offered wisdom and support and love. And when their time was done, they they exited out of my life just as, as they came in. And that's, that is okay. That's okay if people come into your life and don't stay. That doesn't mean that you're anything it doesn't mean anything you know what I mean it just means that they were there for a season to teach you something or to support you in whatever it is that you needed support in that time period um, and I think normalizing normalizing your experience to me is really important mm. it's like this is normal anytime you're uprooting and rebuilding a foundation it's gonna be messy, it's gonna be chaotic, you're gonna have a lot of feels, you're gonna have a lot of emotions, and you just need to remind yourself what you're doing and where you're going. And when you ground yourself in that, you know, that will help you real like help you deal with the struggle that comes that comes with the awakening. And remember, the struggle starts at first, but it's not forever. You know, it's only, it's because you're learning a new skill. You're learning a new aspect of your, about yourself. You're getting to know yourself. And like any relationship, it takes time to build and grow. So it's like you've been building these relationships with all these other people. Now it's time to build a relationship with yourself. And that is partial to me what an awakening is, is learning about how to have a relationship with yourself, getting to know who you are at your core, what you represent, what you believe, and then as you're working on your internal environment, it's going to exude to your external and what you're manifesting in your reality. Mm -hmm. And so when things don't line up and you're experiencing something that is not for your best and highest good, you become more aware of that and you're able to make the shift because you've gone through your awakening and, you're, and you know what you're looking for. Yes. So, yes. yes. That's what I got to share. So <laughs> any last thoughts? 
Uh, no, I'm just glad I'm at a point where I can actually feel like I can share oh. what I've been going through. I'm I so happy you came. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy she came on and like I was like, you want to share your story? Because I would love to share, like have someone to share this with because um, when I watched your um, your IGTV, so if you haven't seen, um, if you're not following Patrice, follow her on Instagram if you want to share your handle since I oh, don't yeah. have the thing popped up. At Patrice Johnson. So check her out. I'll post her um, link in the comments and stuff like that. But I watched her journey and it just like, I loved it. I loved how authentic you were. And like when I, from the outside, I'm like, look at her standing in her power, sharing her light and like helping other people like to do the same, you know? And so for me, I was like, yes, I would definitely want to chat with you because it was very, the journey was very similar. And, um, I wanted people to, to see that people go through this yeah. and, I feel like I'm as happy as I've been because I have healthy boundaries. I have amazing relationships with people. I choose my friendships and I choose my family. I love my family. So my family that's watching, I love you. I love you so much. Um, um, so, but like for my, my, um, inner circle, that's a different type of family. And so I get to choose those and they're so intentional. Yes. Yeah. It's very intentional. And once you know, you know. So once you go through this journey and you start gaining all of this knowledge, it's like you can't help but to share it. And that's part of our mission here, I believe, is to, to speak our truth and shine our light and, and use our voice to support others and empower others that are also going through this. Yeah, so it's whether I liked it or not, which I like it now. I like talking about it. <laughs> but it, at first it was uncomfortable. And... Um, now it's just well I don't I I have to do this it's a soul I like crave to do it I have to do it I feel like it's part of my mission to to do this and help with the global banking so it it feels good to talk about it now yeah and once you know you know so that's right no going back <laughs> there is no going back because if you go back you screwed <laughs> you are s-o-l <laughs> Oh, uh, anyways. All right, guys. Well, thanks for hanging out with us with Conscious Conversations. And I will see you next week on Monday where we're going to talk about meditation woo -woo, with my girl Tracy. So I'll talk to you guys later. Sending you so much love and blessings your way. Mwah! Bye.